Favorite bike? Specialized tarmac. Rim brake or disc brake? Rim brakes, rim brakes, rim brakes, rim brakes, rim brakes. The disc brakes are gonna rub and they're gonna rub and they're gonna rub and there's nothing you can do about it. You're gonna go back to the bike shop ten times a week. Guarantee it. Oh, right, here we have Philip Gilbert, one day classic specialist. Where's he gone? He hasn't been the same since he's been forced onto a disc brake bike. He's riding for the same team he used to ride with. He's got that all that Belgium family going thing going on there. That's great. But he just hasn't been able to perform because his bike isn't neurohormonally set up for him what he's used to. He's used to that. Look at his results. Results judged by results, not by theory. Why on earth would someone like Philip Gilbert... We hear the Palmares, the resume, the results he has. Why on earth would someone so skilled need disc brakes, which are designed for dentists, barristers, Uber Eats riders, and for people who live in London and who ride and commute in the wet? It just doesn't make any, on gravel bikes. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So it's crushed his, look at his resume. Look at 2020, 2021, you know what I mean? That's, he's on a, yeah. Gilbert hates his disc brakes, hates them. <laughs> I love uh, rim brakes. I love because uh, I feel more comfortable. I love the reactive. And you can see for Marlo, he had to edit the bit of there. Like, he was a bit like, oh, don't, don't say too much. Right? Just, that's just enough. Okay, we can cut it there, please. You know, like this break, for rim brakes, okay, now sh no more. No more talking about the weight and the mechanics and the drama. And the bite point, the bite point failure here. Mahoric face planning, his bite point exceeded what he normally was in the lever throw from the previous descents. He grabbed grabbed the brake as normal and it grabbed too hard the bite point went up peaked super physiological levels of bite point and his rear wheel locked up and he slid and then his his pedal clipped the gutter or something his front wheel and then bang he's just crashing hardcore if he had rim brakes or if his brakes were tuned properly actually they're world tour mechanics they know what they're doing but the things that the engineers shimano don't yet know look the duress cranks failing disc brakes for world tour riders no My favorite bike is a Colnago Vitraire. I really like the... Wow, but I thought the aero bikes mattered more. They mattered more for making money off dentists. Anyway, we've got a question here from Tom. This is an observation here. Tom picked up a brand new 2019 Cannondale Carbon Synapse Durace. Uh, disc brakes is a brand new Durace disc brake bike to replace the 105 rim brake. Um, you know, he... He wanted rim brakes, but he couldn't because they're going to get disc brakes. So this is a five and a half thousand dollar bike, mind you. They're Durace disc brakes. I figured I shouldn't have any problems. He's got spent five grand Durace brakes. Shouldn't have any problems. So Tom says, "I'm all excited about my new bike with the Durace components. Go for my first ride, and right away the back rotor is rubbing. Welcome to road disc, Tom. I take it back to the store. Mechanic works on it really hard for about fifteen minutes while I'm waiting and watching. He gives it back to me and shows me it's not rubbing anymore." I go for another ride. Sure enough, it starts rubbing again. I take it back to the store for the second time. Leave the mechanic this time for a few hours. Go back to pick it up later. Mechanic tells me the rotor was not true and explains why he did fix it. He shows me it's not rubbing now and assures me it won't rub anymore. It won't rub anymore. I assure you. I would hate to be a bike mechanic in 2021. Oh my God, it'd be so frustrating. All the dentists, barristers... Coming back, my discs are still rubbing, discs are still rubbing. It's like, oh, I should have told you that from when I saw the point of purchase. Anyway, Tom goes to another ride. When five minutes later, the rear rotor is rubbing again. In seven years, I've never had a problem with the inexpensive Shimano rim brakes on my old bike. I should have listened to you, Durin Rider. This bike with the damn disc brakes is getting returned tomorrow. That's road disc, baby. Road disc. Um, I've gone from Disc Canyon Ultimate to Rim Super 6 Evo and honestly prefer the rim brakes. Every experienced rider prefers rim brakes. They just do, you know. And that's fine if you like discs and prefer rim or whatever. It's just the same. You know, everyone, if everyone's being honest, discs right now is a mad fashion. Aero disc brakes, 50, 60, 80 mil tires, uh, so rims, disc. It's just disc fashion right now. It's the fashion. It's like, you know, it's just how it is. Um, the rim brake is cheap a lot and the brakes are plenty powerful. However, I do live in Spain and only ride in the dry. If I was doing long descents in the wet, I'd prefer disc brakes, but I wouldn't ride in the mountains in the wet anyway. Exactly. 
Uh, my general feeling is yes, discs are excellent for braking, and many disc brakes are excellent, but they cost more, are hard to maintain, correct? And ultimately, don't offer an advantage of ring brake bikes. They don't. Look at the Juro. The Juro, the wettest Juro for as long as I can remember, 25 years of watching it. The wettest Juro, coldest Juro, won by it with rim brakes, on rim brakes. You know, in the wet, did Egan Bernal ever get put into danger in the wet? No. You know, he didn't have to take the risks on the downhills. The other the other guys did on their heavy bikes trying to catch Egan Bernal on the descents. Had to take Bardet, Yates, pull all the stops on the descents, man. All the risks. You know, and they, and they still couldn't beat a Bernal on his rim brake old tech. Um, so there you go. That's just, that's just, anyway, I'm just sharing my opinion, my experiences. The World Tour riders hate, absolutely hate disc brakes. The mechanics even hate them more. Your local mechanic absolutely hates road disc brakes. They're just like, if they're being honest with you, which they can't because it's their job, you know, gotta be like, yeah, no, it's great, it's fine. They absolutely hate it. The, the facing of the frames and the, the bite point and the calipers and the bleeding and the air bubbles and the bent rotors and the barristers like, ah, I just got a bit of oil on my rotor. What do I do now? The contamination from road grind. It's just a lot of faffing around. A lot of faffing around. And for me, I love disc brakes on my mountain bike. Love them on my e-bike. Big 200 mil rotors, 80, 180, feels great. They just work. They just, you know, they Shimano mountain bike brakes. Disc have been proven. The road discs, though, oh, my mia, mama, mia, mia, upsetty spaghetti, very inconsistent. Um, but again, for me, not too much of an issue, but for World Tour Rider, when your career depends on your performances and you're getting beaten by rim brake riders in the Giro, you should have won. Caruso should have won the Giro. Jai Hindley should have won the Giro last year, but they had the disc brake handicap penalty. When I say should, I don't mean that Team Sky guys didn't deserve it, Team Sky won, man. They Ineos, they won. And they did the marginal gains. They rode the best tech. And so they deserve to win. But I think Caruso and Jai Hindley also deserve a win because they rode gravel bikes. Hindley was at 39 seconds. He lost by, you know, to, into second place. Caruso, 89 seconds over three weeks. You're trying to tell me that disc brakes didn't have a play in that second place? They sure did. Egan won. TGH won. And good on them. That's, I'm great to see that because they're, they're using the, they're just using the marginal gains. They're using their brains. Ineos, Team Skylar, what does it take to win? What's the best brakes? What's the lightest bikes? What's the 6.8 kilo limit? Let's do that. On the money. GC riders, on the money, 6.8 kilo bikes. What what disc brake team has GCN featured their 6.8 kilo bike with disc brakes? Oh, that's right. Peter Sagan's SL7 Tarmac, 7.8 kilo. That's right. Juliana Philippe's SL7 tarmac disc brakes, 7.3, 7.2 kilos. Oh, yeah. 400 grams over three weeks. Win by 39 seconds overall. Any coincidence? Is that correlation or causation? That's causation, baby. That's causation. Disc for dirt, rim for road.